best way, to, the best illustration of that because of the uniqueness of this one program, but, but the underlying point is well taken. Well, I can tell you that a couple months ago at, at a board meeting, you know, I asked about any additional cuts, or do we foresee any additional cuts? And at that point, we didn't anticipate any additional cuts in services. So something has changed, and it, and I don't, I don't think it was that I didn't understand or heard a conversation. I think a conversation never took place. And if we're applying for a grant in October that states that Island Transit proposed to continue the route we call 411, um, but then at the last minute we pull that application because we figure out after the fact the impact financially, what it, it's going to cost us for the matching portion, we, we could have, you, you could have put the grant through, you could have been approved just like your grants for Project 1, Project 2. Uh, just because you're approved of the grant doesn't mean you have to accept the grant. <clears throat> No, you know, I, I don't I don't go along with that philosophy. Well, you know, I don't think that's fair to anybody else that's applying for uh, the grant process. You're just sucking up money, and you're not going to make a decision until sometime down the stream when you already know you can't make a match. That doesn't make any sense to me. And, and in fact, Scott, if you were to look back at our budget that we have been working on for three months, every budget, has every draft has shown the Tri-County Connector, Route 411, partially funded and and we talked about it it's not this is not any big surprise you, you're talking about it like uh, somebody just made this decision uh, out of the blue and it's not the case sir it is I'd like to move on if there's anything else you have anything else no it's not okay. <laughs> Let's move on to business item number one, which is a review and discussion of the draft. Uh, this is draft number four. Uh, the budget you've just been taking a look at. You'll note that item number two is actually approval of the resolution. Uh, the budget is contained on page one of the packet, the budget packet. And the resolution is the first, first two pages. further discussion well I, I one of the reasons we I asked that we continue this hearing till this month was so our uh, interim director would have a chance to at least get a quick look at the budget before we took the people on that and, um, I you know Paul's done a good job of doing the overview I think we as a planning document we're all um, we wish we were in a different position clearly there are steps that can be made and if there are savings and efficiencies that can be found during your tenure, we certainly would welcome that. I wanted to make sure that you had a chance to speak to the budget. I'd be interested in your comments. Overall, it's a very, um, it's a tight budget. I think it's a uh, well-constructed budget. I do know there's been a lot of thought. Uh, put into it a lot of questions and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of input. Um, I think it's I think it's a very solid budget, but I will be continuously reviewing and monitoring it for any possible um, reductions or modifications. Um, part of my uh, part of my practice or part of my style is to. Um, uh, Continuously monitor the budget as well as the overall operation. This will be reviewed regularly with, with Paul. And I should say that um, uh, I did have the opportunity to be briefed on the budget, on the proposed budget, uh, by Jim and by Paul both. And um, they both gave me their insights and their their information. And um, they certainly seem to be, be on track with it. So at this point, I'm satisfied with it, but I will certainly be watching it. Yeah, I, 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 one of the, I, I appreciate, Jim, maybe the goals that you presented, I felt, uh, they're just implicit in the budget. You're not yes. asking for approval of these goals no, I, What I tried to do was summarize 
but I thought uh, were uh, goals that are uh, underlying this particular budget. And my, my other idea is that this could be uh, perhaps a starting point if we do go forward with a uh, Citizens Financial Advisory Committee that uh, they, there are uh, financial consolidation goals and there are service area goals. And this is not a closed list. This would be an open list in the sense that uh, if some uh, important goal has been left off, it could uh, certainly be uh, added, uh, such as a continuation of the 411 route. I noted from Paul's earlier comments that there is continuation of the 411 route. It's just not at the 100% level that it was for the first six months. It will be continued at 70% of the service that it has. <coughs> um, and that is a, a commitment that Island Transit is making without uh, the continued state funding for the last six months of 2015. So that seems like a pretty significant uh, commitment. And, I didn't know about that when I drew up this list, because that is uh, part of the discussion that, that you were highlighting just now. You probably follows on turn number one of the second mm -hmm. items. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I, I would prefer to have a budget that does not dip into the emergency reserves throughout the year, and it, it could be that there are other things that come. But on the other hand, our, this organization exists to provide service. And the best service uh, to the citizens is spend as much as we can do efficiently and effectively while still rebuilding the financial health of this agency. And I, I, this budget does reflect that. It's, it's pushing that, but that's what, we, that's what the citizens would want us to do. It doesn't help anybody. Uh, I mean, it's paratransit services is what we're trying to we need to have the financial health of a, of, a, of a cash balance, but we also need to preserve service services. And I want to say that the managers have all had a chance uh, to take a look at this last draft budget and comment on it, make comments, see if they had any last, last opportunity to, to uh, have input and mm -hmm. any more input because of looking at it. All through the process. Uh, I, I would say uh, one other thing that uh, I think the one area that shows uh, a small increase is in vehicle maintenance operations, uh, not in the staffing but in the uh, actual operations because they are bringing some of the uh, major engine rebuilding activity in-house mm -hmm. and that is uh, designed to increase the efficient use of, the, of funding. And it's also, of course, related to the aging of the fleet, um, which will, over time, uh, show some improvement with the addition of four uh, light bus buses uh, in the fall of next year. But uh, other than that, um, most of, uh, most every department is uh, showing uh, uh, salary savings uh, over the previous year and which would be expected and um, some items that have been brought up by the public have been uh, carefully reviewed and reduced uh, most of the travel money is for obligatory training not for optional uh, travel uh, since we live on an island uh, some of the technical training particularly for uh, vehicle maintenance and operations takes place uh, on the mainland and requires uh, some travel expense. This is true in the administrative sector also. Has to remain certified for yes. various areas. Yes. Yeah. And required uh, training for certification and requiring travel. In this, in this budget, we don't account for any dollars going back to the FTA for misuse or over expenditure. 
Well, it's not specifically spelled out. Um, I would imagine if, if, if something like that occurred, that we would have to take that from either the reserve or working capital. The as we look at your projected revenue and based upon year-to-date actuals, we're actually going to miss our two, our budgeted. Uh, dollar amount for sales tax revenue. We're, we're going to come in under again. Um, what page are you looking? Uh, page three. It, it looks like uh, forty grand. Yeah, uh, yes, by forty grand. Seven point five million. I think we're off by forty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't part of that 2014 budget process, and so um, what I'm just showing there is uh, and, and the 2015 is uh, exact 5% uh, projection above 2014. What I'm going to do is encourage Mr. Krauss to go back and take a look at how well we've done as a board when it comes to our budgets what we projected and where we actually came in at. Um, we, we don't have a real good track history. Uh, and so uh, we've been extremely optimistic in the past. Uh, Councilmember Sunberg mentioned that our issue in where we're at today is because of you know, this, uh, our service exceeded our revenues. And I'd expand upon that saying that you know, our service exceeded our optimistic assumptive revenues and you know we, we assumed quite a few things uh, whether it was uh, sales tax revenues or uh, possible grants to pay for operations uh, but every grant revenue that we have in here is a done deal it's not a situation where something could go wrong with the grants that we have in here that's right those, those are our grants and, and that's that's refreshing I guess I would say it's good to shop local because those sales taxes that you and your holiday shopping all help support our trades. And if you can't buy it locally, have it delivered so that the sales tax follows your purchase. <laughs> Further discussion? I would also point out is the, the, the budget still, we don't account for any possibility of surplusing um, items, assets. Um, and I would encourage uh, management to take a strong, hard look at that. I, I have a question on page four. Well, maybe you can help. We've talked to folks around the Tri County Connector direct state grant, the 340,000 that for. That's for the first six months of this year, correct? That's right. And that does not have an island transit portion to it? Well, I think that does. Yeah, it I thought does I did. That's why right. I was wondering why there's a zero there. It, um, the, way, the reason I present it that way is because the money that we received was based off of a formula. Mm -hmm. And the, the difference between the, the total cost and what we pay toward it, uh, the total cost and, and what they pay us, is our portion, so it changes from month to month, depending on the amount of uh, hours that we spend on those routes. So I just chose to present it that way because uh, it wasn't a hard and fast percentage. I, I, I might be wrong about that, but I, I think it's based on the level of service that we provide. So where would we see uh, in, in the in the expenditure report where it shows 411? Be in the in the service report in the, in the monthly uh, in the operations. Yeah, I think yeah our our portion shows up in um, operations uh, in the expense <coughs> the appropriation side, um, whereas it, the revenue side is what you're seeing on page four. Correct. Okay, so that that's what I wanted to be because it is a little a little bit confusing to see a zero there when in fact there is a local. Yeah. Support that's necessary for that. So I, I understand the challenge you've described. I, 
but it so it would be incorporated into the operations budget into the three million plus that we that we have up for operations. We, we did uh, Paul did supply me with a, a breakout that showed our costs versus our uh, the grant portion when we were trying to analyze whether we could find money to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's when we started taking a look at how much it's actually costing us uh, each year versus how much the grant portion is and uh, help make that decision uh, about what we could do or not. But, um, but that's why I was asking. I don't, we, you had, it, I, it was a, a little confusing to me that there was some, there's the 341000 is the state money that would come. There is some limited or a lesser amount of service that would be solely funded by island transit should there not be state grants at 70 percent for that route is that was that correct yeah i have to go back and look at i'm trying to understand what was said earlier during this meeting oh in, in the total um, number of allocated operator hours i reduced um, with the assumption that i would take 30 percent off of that route going forward next year so that that was just um, something that I put in there as an assumption you know um, if I think there was also discussion that the route could completely go away or that it could be funded at 50% um, and I put in there 70% if, if it doesn't go that direction the board decides something else uh, another use for that money or um, and that would be a little bit of a, a buffer or surplus that they could use for a reconfiguration grounds. Uh, that was the idea. Which is, that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, reconfiguration. Well, then that's where I, I, I know we are only, the 411 is the only one that's uh, mentioned in here, but clearly the advocacy from the region is for, includes the Everett Connector as well. And so um, I want to make sure that we, we are open to the flexibility that could present itself, that maybe we reduce one to help fund a little bit of the other even if we could you know uh, if there is capability within the state to help fund a portion of these kind of connections um, I, I want to just looking at all the opportunities that are out there and not just focus on the, the one the one more than that i think it, it, right. you know, it'll be it'll be unfolding as the conversations proceed with the other transit authorities and with the legislature and, I, I want to make sure that I was understanding that correctly. Yeah. Go forward. Yeah, well, that's just because I think I was a little confused too. Because I heard it you know, being cut. The, the, the state funding is, is scheduled to go away. But we're just still going to maintain it at seventy percent. Well, that's what's budgeted. Or what we're, we're hoping to do. Well, we're going to maintain it until June at seventy percent. No, and uh, at well, at hundred percent of, yeah. of yeah. what we're doing right so, now. Uh, mm -hmm. But this, this is the connector between basically Whidbey Island and March Point. But it's also Camino to and Mount Camino Vernon. To Mount Vernon, right? Yeah. We're running. And those are both. Eight those are both four eleven. Nine runs here. Yeah. yeah. We're going to continue to do that until um, uh, the end of June. It, I, and again, I will just reiterate. I think that it might be more cost effective for us to partner more evenly with the Skagit Transit on the transportation because right now it's island transit buses that are going mm -hmm. the biggest people outside of our boundaries we're talking and, about that so I, I yeah and, I, and yeah. I'm sure that will be I just I, I won't have the opportunity to be here probably while that conversation is continuing so I just I think it's important that we communicate a lot with the with the community over this issue as we're going forward and, and what how it is a partnership between the local agency and the state and, and a regional partnership as well. I think you know, we've been federally recognized as a region for how well we've been able to create mobility for our citizens, and I think that's something we should be proud of and find ways to continue. As well as the, uh, the budget goals that you brought forward, I think that we'll be talking today about the community um, advisory committee, but even with or without that, I think communicating these goals with the public uh, in as broadly as possible will really help. It will be very helpful. Thank you. If we're going to end 
the year and start January 1 with 924000 in cash, we could make our Washington State Transportation Insurance Pool premium payment of 318000 versus deferring it till October and paying the interest that they're going to charge us. True? I think that's an option. I also think that there are other um, objectives to this budget, such as the radio repeaters and the other bus purchases that we're reviewing up for in the middle of the year. So there, there are those multiple priorities. And, and so um, we, we made that choice to defer the payment, and that's what's been put into the budget. I mean, that's kind of the plan going forward. It could change. I think that's what um, how I prepare the budget based on those choices. And and I think that at least my viewpoint is that priority number one would to uh, ensure that we have the insurance coverage for any services that we are providing. And before we go out and purchase more buses, more vans, uh, if there is a premium payment that's due and we have the money for it before we go spend it elsewhere that we take care of our obligations. Well, I, I think that's true um, and, and I think we will be taking care of those obligations. It's just on a different payment schedule. And, and, uh, like, when I buy my own personal insurance, uh, they give me two options. I can pay it in full, I can pay it on a different schedule. And I kind of liken this to that. I mean, it's, it's, but the argument that we as an island transit made to Washington State Transportation Insurance Pool back in July when we pleaded and argued and, and, uh, Thanks for your camera. was the fact that I we mean, had no money. Well, the fact is we know now that well, we do have money, um, but instead of uh, paying our premium, um, because we got a deferment when we told them we didn't have any money, uh, we're going to spend it elsewhere and go ahead and postpone that insurance premium pool payment until October. Yeah, you know, I also think that um, having uh, working capital case of an emergency, and I, I think you brought this up in an earlier uh, board meeting, it is a prudent thing to do, an important thing to have, um, and, and so carrying that extra cash and perhaps deferring that payment um, might be a good cautionary measure. And, you know, I think the implication that we don't have insurance coverage is wrong, because we do, and uh, we are covered, and um, uh, the pool that we belong to, we're part of this insurance pool. We're, we're a member. And, um, uh, and I think the agreement was made and it was made uh, for the right reasons. Uh, uh, and I think that's the way that uh, this budget is prepared and uh, it makes financial sense. And, and, and no one's implying that we don't have coverage. Uh, we, we have coverage only out of the goodness of their hearts, and we're not paying for that insurance coverage. We're, we're getting covered, um, and we're not going to pay our premium until uh, October. I, I think the decision was made, and my understanding was that it was in, in light of the cash shortfall and the ongoing tight budget that we would be operating on, that we, in, in light of that, want needing to have uh, some cash reserves to operate, uh, that that's why there was a payment, a different payment schedule negotiated. It doesn't, uh, I, I understand what, what you're implying. Um, and if, in fact, we were to make that payment, then we would have fewer cash reserves going forward. So um, I think it's one of those parts of the budget that can be, and one of the decisions that can be revisited as more information is gathered and we're watching sales tax revenue come in over the year and if, um, if gas prices stay down and there's capacity, 
but it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the goodness of their heart. There was a business decision made by the pool as a group of members to restructure our payments for our insurance. So it's, um, I, I think it was, it was a negotiated and a, and a, a financial decision in light of one of their members. So, Which is a very unique situation, in fact, one that doesn't happen within the insurance pool ever, and uh, it, was an also, it was also not unanimous, um, and based upon the information that we provided to them to help them make their decision to grant us the deferment, I think our financial situation has changed, um, and we have the ability to pay the insurance premium and should in a timely fashion versus deferring it. It should be a an obligation that will be uh, take care of first. I understand you feel that way. We can take a look at it at the turn of the year when we have end of the year confirmation of both uh, revenue and expenses. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? If, uh, if we have no further discussion, uh, I'd like to move this on to business item number two. Before you is resolution 7-14, which actually uh, approves uh, the budget for, this, for the next year. And um, you have a draft. Some yellow um, sheet. No. Oh, yeah. What color is it? Yellow. Okay, yellow. Good. You have a copy of the draft on the yellow sheet. I think it's right in here. It's too many papers. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a big yellow one on the bottom of it. Okay. Yellow sheet. The motion is at the bottom of the yellow sheet. Jim, you for most on this. Would you like yes, to I, I move to approve resolution 7 14 of the Board of Directors of the Island County Public Transit Benefit Area Corporation, otherwise known as Island Transit, establishing the 2015 Island Transit Annual Budget. It moved and seconded to approve resolution 7 14. Further discussion? I, I uh, will appreciate the close monitoring of this budget moving forward and continuing to stabilize our finances while we maximize services. Yes, and again, this, be, this is uh, if we get those funds and grants that we were speaking of earlier and it's amended. Et cetera, et cetera, correct? I'm good with that. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion approving resolution 7 14 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, four, four, one, nay. This is item number three. We have some um, bookkeeping measures to take care of. And uh, business item number three is resolution 8-14. And it allows uh, certain people to sign warrants and investments on behalf of Island Transit. And uh, this is basically to uh, uh, allow Ken to become a signatory on various items uh, that come before uh, him daily. Um, and it, uh, do we have a copy of that actual one? This. Okay. Behind the green sheet. Go ahead. Keep going, you're almost there. Oh, okay. I've got this. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. 8-14. Uh, we had the, uh, uh, It used to say Martha Rose. 
Um, and now it says Kenneth J. Grasso. So I'll, I'll move approval of resolution 8-14. I have a little bit of comment or question. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 8-14. So my concern is not about that. This is a little bookkeeping thing, but we have not had a resolution that uh, is formally establishes the finance of the board and, uh, and mentions how we review on an ongoing basis, um, the cash flow statements, and the, I think it, I think that would be a, a helpful thing. Yeah. Um, um, I want to I want to make it part of this the record here because I want folks to know that this is not that the board is stepping away from that new uh, subcommittee that was established that reviews the warrants and the uh, double checks the treasurer's statements and the bank statements with the, the cap, cash. Right. This is this is for day-to-day -day operations, yeah. and it does provide for two persons, but uh, it's I think not appropriate for a board member to. I, but not for a board to be signing. No, I'm, I'm just okay. speaking to the fact that, these, that this is the signature. There's a resolution, but I wanted to make sure it was noted that this doesn't that there will continue to be board oversight of the warrants sure. and the cash flow. Um, which I, I, I was hopeful that this board would want to memorialize at some point. So. And, and it does uh, require two signatures, not, mm -hmm. not one as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's right. Further discussion? Been moved and seconded to approve resolution 8 14. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Four, four, one against. Uh, business item number four um, is again is another housekeeping thing. It's uh, uh, resolution nine dash fourteen. Actually allows this is a new um, electronic program that's called Team uh, that uh, requires a uh, executive director's uh, signature and it has to be done via board resolution um, there was a question raised during the public comment period about that i wonder Matt. i was thinking what i if you could speak to that what we could do to address that issue is make any uh, submission to team subject to board approval so you need a motion at a meeting for or to notify the board. I don't know what this is. The execution of federal grants. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a requirement that we sign search insurances um, each year, and uh, they require um, that an executive figure and this is um, electronically sign on that we're we're promising to follow the rules and regulations. Uh, More chair. Okay. Well, this sorry, and this doesn't speak to our attorney. 